Battalion 2, Division 2, Engine 2, Engine 46, Engine 8, Ladder 2, Rescue 247. Residential Structure Fire, 3363 Davy Boulevard. Caller advising that his bedroom is on fire. We're getting multiple calls on this. Advising it's a three story building. And there are people evacuating from the building. Who we are now. All began. 100 years ago, Fort Lauderdale was a new city just on the verge of massive growth. Because of a major planning flaw, the city experienced a setback that killed its budding business district and left residents scrambling to put the pieces back together. Around midnight on June 2, 1912, a small fire began in the town's most imposing building, the H.G. Wheeler Mercantile. With no fire department to call on, the small fire quickly got out of control and eventually burned a large portion of this very young city. After the Great Fire, uh, the Osceola Hotel burnt to the ground uh, several months later. So I think the citizens got together and started a fire department, uh, saw the need, and 100 years later, here we are. The Fort Lauderdale that we know today is a city that has risen from the ashes of this great tragedy. Uh, from its founding in 1912 until today, it's made tremendous uh, advancements, tremendous achievements. It has gone from a, uh, a startup department that uh, you know, went from a single fire station in a downtown location to now being a regional fire department that has uh, everything from uh, you know, the fire rescue, the emergency services, to transport, to uh, the hook and ladder, to being able to rescue somebody out of a high rise or, or rescue somebody that might be in the intercoastal or in the, in the river. So, the fire department has certainly uh, developed over the years and grown into a full service unit and one that, again, uh, we are extremely proud of. The incredible and storied history of the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department began in June of 1912 when the city purchased its first fire equipment. Earl H. Will, Frank Craybill and Fred Beatty were among the first brave men to become volunteer firefighters and start the proud lineage of men and women that serve today as part of the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department. Fort Lauderdale is a very unique, very unique organization and uh, you know I look back at the individuals that have retired from here and there's no regret. I mean there's a lot of pride in who we are as an organization, what we do, how we do it, uh, why we do it, and the community we serve. We have an honest desire to want to work for the city of Fort Lauderdale and I think you see it in the way we, we do our job. I've traveled all over the country, quite frankly, over in Europe as well, and I'd put our folks up against anybody. The Fort Lauderdale Fire Department has been recognized for decades as one of the state leaders in fire prevention. This dates back to the 1940s, when the fire department held losses to zero for the months of May and June of 1940. This was remarkable considering they answered 55 fire alarms in the month of May alone. It was the big one, a spectacular blaze at the Everglades fertilizer plant. Those who fought it, many of whom were young firefighters at the time, will not forget it. I was home and I got called back in for the Everglades fertilizer fire. And I went downtown and then I stayed down there until they sent me 
over to the Everglades fertilizer with the crew and I worked with the men over there and we got the fire out. For years the department's focus was on fire suppression and prevention. However, the 1990s brought significant change and expansion to the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department. In 1995, Engine 3 and Engine 8 were the first advanced life support units to go into service. This allows firefighters to provide life-saving services in the field. Uh, when I started as a paramedic, a lot of the things that we do now were unheard of in the street, you know, doing 12 lead EKGs and, 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 and giving some of the medicines that we give now, it was, it was really unheard of. Now, nowadays we have a lot more freedom to uh, give advanced treatments in the field and, and make a difference for the people that we serve. By the late 90s, the fire department began full EMS services with 10 rescue transport units and added 12 fire and rescue dispatchers to the communications division. We're running 14 medical rescue units right now. Those are ALS ambulances with fire capabilities, staff with firefighter paramedics. Uh, also, every one of our engines, every one of our ladders is also ALS capable. The EMS Bureau has been the biggest growth. Uh, we did strictly fire. We went into the EMS Bureau approximately 10 years ago. That was a major uh, growth for the department, as well as growing our special operations team. Uh, we're a very progressive department. Um, if there are studies out there that show a certain procedure works, we're going to be the first ones in the county to implement that procedure. We've got the latest and greatest tools that we use for our patients. Um, anything out there that's going to be beneficial to the public that you can pretty much guarantee that we're going to be the, the department that's going to use it first. With the heat, hurricanes and massive waterways flowing through this great city, you have to be prepared for anything. Because of this, the Special Operations Divisions and Bureaus was developed, allowing natural and man-made disasters to be met head-on with skill, bravery and technology. The duties of the brave men and women include not only firefighting and prevention, but also ocean rescue, hazardous materials, advanced life support, technical rescue, airport rescue, marine team, SWAT medic, urban search and rescue, light technical rescue, as well as honor guard and color guard. Over 450 men and women make up these departments that serve in many capacities to keep this city safe. What sets us apart from other fire and rescue departments across the country is the state-of-the-art equipment. Brand new stations, brand new equipment, brand new fire trucks, training. The department is growing, it's always changing. That's the one thing I've noticed. This department does not take anything granted. They bring in uh, the best equipment possible for the firefighters. I think our, our biggest advances have been protect one another, I think. Our new air packs have the ability to, for a chief officer to keep track. It's uh, called the SEMS unit. It's, it's actually part of the air pack and it has a, uh, a receiver that the, the officers outside, chief officers usually handle it outside and it can monitor all the trucks. You know, as soon as they go on, they can click on, they can scroll through and see where everybody's air supplies are at. If, uh, if they're down, that'll send a signal to the officers as well so they know that hey we need to send somebody to search for these groups and find them. So those, those type of technologies I think you know and I think that's really is going to be the wave of the future. This advanced equipment has resulted in an incredible safety record. Uh, I think we've got a very good safety record for a department our size. Uh, firefighter safety is paramount. When you think about how many other, other larger fire departments are the same size as our departments have lost people in the line of duty and ours is rather small with only two, I think uh, we're pretty proud that we've been able to, to hold that number uh, to only two firefighters in, in 100 years. Uh, we have these uh, medallions that we're putting outside of buildings now and, and that's the result of a, a tragedy uh, up in the middle of the state of Florida where several firefighters lost their lives. And what these uh, medallions indicate, uh, if the roof is comprised of lightweight truss system, what the intention is is that when our firefighters pull up on the scene and they have a fire, they have to consider that roof construction and the fact that it may not hold up well under fire conditions. What began as a small volunteer fire department 100 years ago has now become one of the busiest fire and rescue departments in the country. Fort Lauderdale runs about an average of 42,000 calls a year. Of those, 
I'd say 80% are medical calls. When a 911 call is forwarded to the Fort Lauderdale Fire and Rescue Department, immediate action is taken to get the call dispatched to the appropriate station. 1300 West Broward at the police station, we have smoke on the third floor. The stations are notified as to the type of call that is coming in with an advanced color-coded light system. Dispatch uses the latest in communications technology to stay in constant contact with the trucks at all times. This has led to some of the fastest response times in the state. When the bell goes off or the tones go off, go downstairs and be in your truck and be ready to go. For the majority, because the way our stations are laid out and the amount of personnel that we have, we can get an arriving unit in six minutes or less to any call. And then we can start mitigating the problem and then continue from there. As a coastal city, often referred to as the Venice of America, many of the city's rescues revolve around water. In 2004, the Fort Lauderdale Beach Patrol, which was formerly a part of the Parks and Recreation Department, was moved into the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department and officially became the Ocean Rescue Division. Uh, right off the bat, we got all new first aid kits. We were all required to get first responder training which was a step up from the regular standard first aid class that we had had. We've uh, created a 10% pay raise incentive for our lifeguards to get uh, EMT training. Take our water test, which includes a 500 meter ocean swim in 10 meters or less, with a 50 meter swim to tow in an unconscious uh, beach patron in two minutes to make it to the person. So it's been a, it's been a big jump in the level of uh, professionalism. We were able to expand our beach uh, by roughly three quarters of a mile. We got five additional lifeguard towers and we were able to add two new lieutenant positions as well as 15 new lifeguard positions. So it was, a, it was definitely a positive change for us as a department. We average somewhere between five and seven million beach patrons every year. Um, and we've had maybe two drowning deaths in the last 26 years. So we'll put those statistics up against just about anybody. We believe that our lifeguards are some of the best trained in South Florida, if not the country. Community outreach expands beyond the city of Fort Lauderdale. The Fort Lauderdale Fire Department has 16 sister cities around the globe. They are able to share their expertise to help other cities stay safe as well. Those are cities in, that don't operate like they do in the United States and their level of training and their equipment and uh, the challenges that they face are much more dramatic than we have here. So whatever they can glean from us and whatever we can provide for them to keep them safe and keep their citizens safe, we're more than happy to have that uh, culture exchange. The men and women of the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department go beyond the call of duty. They show compassion for those in need outside of our community. When the earthquake took place in Haiti, there was a young girl that was a victim, um, not of the earthquake, but a, uh, a truck struck her. It happened for her to be transported here to the States to get treatment. I was on shift that day and I was able to transport her from the airport to the hospital. So she was here for approximately three months. My wife and I, we went to see her almost every day. We made her feel comfortable. She had no family here and I had the honor of bringing her back home to her parents in Haiti when she was fully recovered. All right, and here go your first responders. There they go. Tunnel to Towers Run, uh, the second annual here held in Fort Lauderdale. Started in 2002 in New York City uh, to memorialize the legacy of Stephen Siller, who uh, lost his life on September 11th. Uh, he ran through the battery tunnel with his gear on, is why we wear the gear. There was no choice. He strapped 65 pounds of gear on his back. He ran through the tunnel to the towers where he gave up his life while saving others. Stephen is my hero. Firefighters work 24 hours on and 48 hours off. During their 24-hour shift, they live at the fire station Cooking together and sharing meals creates camaraderie and an extended family. The kitchen is kind of a teaching thing, it's a fellowship thing, and it's a way of hanging out and enjoying each other's company. When we come on shift, uh, we collect money for food, and we basically shop uh, whatever is available for us that we decide on what we want to cook. You also find out everyone's personality. Sometimes it's good and bad. <laughs> for the last 100 years, in times of crisis, 
This great city has called on the brave men and women of the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department. Very few people will ever understand what it means to be a firefighter. Because of this, these men and women share a special bond. Everybody always asks you what's the worst thing you've ever seen and uh, usually spare them the details because it's not what they want to hear. They want to hear either the biggest fire or the goriest car accident. Uh, so I think that getting back to the station and cutting up is really what gets you through the 24 hours and usually makes for some great stories, most of which can't be told. The department for me has been like a family. I had an accident many years ago and um, they were all there for me. I was at a work for over, I believe, a year and a half I was off shift and everyone donated time to me. They came and visited me when I was in the hospital. After my final surgery, there was 11 trucks outside. There was a rescue, there was engine, there was a ladder, fire chiefs, there was inspectors, and they were all standing outside waiting for me to come out after my surgery. And that to me was an incredible feeling. Like I knew, wow, I said, I never knew how many people really cared. As firefighters, we do make a difference. We've changed people's lives, we've, we've saved people, and we do this a lot. As firefighters, I think that most of us are, are the type that want to help people, and that's why we got into this business. I know it, it worked out for me. We do make a difference, and we always have. I think the talent pool that we have for personnel is extraordinary. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is a great city to work for, there's no doubt about it. It's uh, 100 years of tradition. It's been a privilege for me, uh, has been extraordinary. Becoming a firefighter is not a job, it is a life calling. The dedicated men and women of our Fire and Rescue Department put their lives at risk every day to protect our families, our neighbors, and our community. It takes sacrifice, determination, and dedication if you are a new firefighter or have ever considered this honorable profession, listen to the words of advice from the individuals that have come before you. I would say the best advice I could give any young person that wanted to be a fireman is study hard. Pay attention to your officers. <laughs> Don't quit. Do your best. Wonderful career. Be positive. Train every day. Respect the people that you work with. Pick out a winner and stick with them. Just keep your mouth shut. You need to keep your nose clean. And you're going to go a long way. If you want a rewarding career to watch yourself grow and be able to give to the community, this is the career for you. Battalion 13, Battalion 2, Division 2, Engine 2, Engine 46, Engine 8, Ladder 2, Rescue 247. We are Fort Lauderdale Fire Rescue. On behalf of the city of Fort Lauderdale, I want to thank our men and women of our fire department for their service to our community and for the tremendous sacrifice that they have made over the years. As I've said many times, I think we have the finest fire department uh, anywhere in the state of Florida. Outstanding group of young men and women who are just uh, dedicated to preserving and protecting our community. You know, we go to bed every night uh, knowing that our fire department is here to keep us safe, to keep us secure, and to protect our homes, protect our families, to allow us to enjoy this great quality of life that we have here in the city of Fort Lauderdale. So again, on behalf of the city of Fort Lauderdale, thank you for your service, thank you for your sacrifice, and just keep up the great work. We are so proud of the job that you do day in and day out on our behalf. Firefighter. <laughs> picture all the mold heads. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Rowan? Yeah. Okay. 
We were driving that truck through the tunnel to a fire one night and the guy passed us on a bicycle. I can't tell you. No, I'm kidding. This is like the most important thing I think in the fire is cooking and eating. We got them there. <laughs> I was on fire when I got it. It was before I got it. I had to shine on my face. Well, I wear the makeup. That's right, 29 years and I'm done. Set, dude. <laughs> don't encourage those guys. Do not give them any ammunition. They'll run with it. They don't know how to stop. Is that danger? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>